Hello students, I am Madam Yap from Udon and Richmond Private Limited. Today we are going to learn about light and shadows. But before that, I want to show you something very interesting. Can you read this word? It looks like the letters are kind of flipped from right to left. And then you can kind of guess, right, the word is ambulance, but it doesn't seem very right because you should have the A on this side and the E, e on the other side, but it's kind of flipped. All right, so I, I want to tell you that when you see the word ambulance on and a real ambulance, this is how it is written, and there's a reason for this. Okay, I'm just going to teach you a little bit about reflection of light. So imagine that this ambulance is coming, okay? And the word is spelled on it. And it goes, be asking you to give way. And then you can see the word on your rear view mirror. You are driving, okay? Like you're driving. And then this is your rear view mirror for you to look and see the vehicles behind. Okay? And can you see the word ambulance now? Now it is it says uh, ambulance in the right way, right? Okay, so it's quite interesting. Huh? Now you see this is how um, reflection works and they purposely spelled ambulance that way, wrote it in that manner so that you can see it on your rear view mirror. Okay, if you see your worksheets on page 16, uh, we say about the reflection and line of symmetry. So this is the mirror, okay? Imagine this is a mirror that you, you place here and then you, can you see the word ambulance very clearly? Okay, if you can see it, then this is what we will write on, in that blank space. Okay, let's write down. Ambulance will be a M B U L A N Is it correct? C E I'm writing it upside down for you. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, so this is our first activity to show you that the mirror here is called the line of symmetry or rather it forms the line of symmetry and everything is a mirror image, it's a reflection. So you see the word ambulance written correctly. Next, we are going to learn about shadows and we see shadows all around us and sometimes we see shadows made by planets. I'm going to show you what an eclipse is. Okay, there are two kinds of eclipses. One is called the solar eclipse and the other one is the lunar eclipse. So the word solar means sun. Solar eclipse is a, an eclipse of the sun. And the lunar eclipse is the eclipse of the moon. How does it work? I'll show you. Here I have the globe. Ah, and I can see Singapore is right about here on the equator. Equator is the middle line of the earth and I will use a torch to represent the sun. Now, do you know that the moon does not give out light but rather it reflects light from the sun. So imagine if this is the, oh, maybe I can show you here, maybe this way. If this is the sun, okay, and on the other side here, it is now night time because the sun is on shining on the other side it's now night time and can you see the the reflection made by the moon i'm moving the the mirror which represents the moon can you see the flashing of the light is caused by reflection of the sun's light onto the moon's surface and is reflected on earth so that's why the moon helps us to see at night but it does not give up light it is gives a reflection Okay, and rather it reflects the sun's light. So what happens during a lunar eclipse? 
during a lunar eclipse, you have the sun and the earth and the moon is on this side. Okay? So when you shine the light, okay, and you may you, you you will the earth is in the path of the light. When this happens, the earth blocks the light from the sun. So at first you may see a bit of the moon, then when the sun moves, then you can see that the earth now blocks the moon and then you know you, you cannot really see the moon. Okay? Whereas at other times, okay, maybe I should show you this way. At other times, you can see that the moon light is here. Can you see this bright light here? The moon's light is there. But if this if the moon is in the this position and this and the earth is blocking it, ah then you will have a moment where you do not see the moon anymore. This is blocked by the earth's shadow on the moon. Okay? So this is called a lunar eclipse. Then what about a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the light coming from the sun. So if the moon moves in such a way, okay, maybe I should show you here. Okay, so you can see now the on Earth. Okay, where where are we? We're here. Some we're somewhere here, right? Okay, this is Singapore, and recently I think I I saw a a, a solar eclipse. Now we are now looking at the sun shining down. And then, if the moon were to move exactly in the path of the light and covers the sun, then in the middle of the day, it can suddenly become quite dark. Okay, then after that, the moon moves away or the sun moves and then the light comes back on again. Okay, you can see? Alright, so this is just to show you the shadows cast by the planets and causing eclipses. Next, I think we're going to do an experiment. Yes. Have you heard of the story of, of um, Elsa, Anna, Olaf? It's called Frozen. And then there's a very popular song, Let It Go, Let It Go. Right. So we're going to do a little bit of a shadow puppetry experiment. And I will need to make everywhere dark to do it. For our shadow puppetry activity, we need a flashlight. Okay, which is which is this one. Okay. Next, we need colored translucent papers. Wow, we can see the colors. We also need some puppets for the story of Frozen. We've got Elsa, we've got Anna, Olaf, and some snowflakes. Okay, if you're ready, we can start the story. Okay. Elsa and Anna played with each other when they were little. And you can see I'm moving the cutouts further from the light source and nearer the screen. Now they are big. Whoa, I'm bringing it closer to the light source away from the screen. Okay, now they do not play with each other. Wah. One day, when the sky was clear and blue, so I put the cellophane paper over, Elsa decided to make snowflakes. Some were big, and some were small. When the sun was almost setting and the sky was red, Olaf brought Anna to find Elsa and help them to be close again. Ha! Huh. Yay! Okay, so. That's it for our shadow puppetry activity. I hope you like it. 
For your take-home experiment, you're given a piece of paper with the template of shapes of animals and straws. So at home, look out for scotch tape, scissors and glue. Okay. So what you do is you cut out which shape you want to do, the rabbit, and now you stick it on using the glue. Stick it onto the cardboard piece. Oops. Like that. Next, you cut it. You cut the shape of the rabbit. It's easier for me to make this smaller. Here you go, you have a cutout of the shape of a rabbit. Now you stick it onto a straw. So this is your little shadow puppet of the rabbit. And you can cut out the tortoise and you can make a story of the hare and the tortoise and you can use it to uh, entertain your family. If you do not have a flashlight, you can borrow your parents' flashlight. Like for example, this is an iPhone. You can turn on the flashlight, so the, the light will come out from here, and then you can do your shadow puppetry show. Let's take a look at the worksheets on page 18. It says, number one, a piece of cardboard does not allow light to pass through. Is that, is that correct? Yes. So when we used the shadow puppet and it's made of cardboard, it forms a shadow. So the light did not pass through. So the answer is true. The cellophane paper allows some light to pass through. Here I've got the blue cellophane paper and it, it allows blue light to pass through, like that. Okay, can you see a bit of blue light coming through? Uh, just now was the, the rabbit and you can see that it does not allow light to pass through. So you see a shadow, right? So the cellophane allows a certain colour to pass through, blue colour. So yes, the cellophane paper allows some light to pass through. In this case, it was the blue colour that was passed through. A transparent object allows all the light to pass through. Like your window pane. Okay, I've also got here a scotch tape, which is transparent. And let's see. Yes, all the light passed through. Okay, do you see any shadow? A little bit only, right? But most of the the uncreased parts of the scotch tape allowed the light to pass through. So it is true that the transparent object allows all the light to pass through. Yeah. So here, the next question says, a blue cellophane allows blue light to pass through. We saw that. Now we'll see what happens with the red cellophane. The red cellophane 
see this white light and when I cover it with cellophane, it allows the red light to pass through. So is this true? Yes, this is true. So we circle true. When a piece of cardboard blocks light, a shadow can be seen. Yes. When the piece of cardboard blocks the light, a shadow can be seen because the light does not pass through the cardboard. That is true. When a piece of cardboard is brought near the light source and far from the screen, the shadow becomes bigger. Okay, so I've got the light here. And if it is brought near the light source, further from the screen, whoa, it's getting bigger, right? You see, far from the light source, near to the light source, it gets bigger. So this is true. When a piece of cardboard is brought far from the light source and near the screen, the shadow becomes sharper. Let's see. So this is um, the rabbit's ears. I'm bringing, it, I'm bringing the cardboard far from the light source and near to the screen. The, now this piece of paper is my screen. Does it become sharper? Yes, it does look sharper. So the answer is true. Let's take a look at page 19. What causes the formation of shadows? Light cannot pass through op opaque objects. Opaque objects block light, so we see a we see a shadow. The opaque object we used just now was cardboard. Cardboard, right? So light travels in a what line so we can see the outline of the shadow. So if we, we the light passes in a straight line and then we can see the outline of the shadow okay we don't have light going this way curving all over the place it just goes straight down and when it is blocked we see the shadow and it's because light travels in a straight line so you can see the shape for the next activity we will need a plastic cup a paper cone and a flashlight we are going to observe the kind of shadows formed by the cup and the paper cone. Let's take a look at the shadows formed by a cup. I shall use this as a screen. For a, paper, for a plastic cup, I can form a shadow well, that looks like a cup. Or if I move the, the cup, I can also form another shadow which is just round. Okay, let's draw the shadows that we see. This is a cup and we also saw a round shadow. So these are the two shapes of shadows that we see formed by the plastic cup. So you can see that if you hold it at different angles, you can form different shadows. Let's take a look at page 20. What about the shadows made by a paper cone? So let's watch the screen. You can form a triangular shape and if you tilt the cone, you can form a round shape, triangle, triangle, or round, or round. Let's draw the shadows formed by the paper cone. We have a triangle shape, and also a round shape. If you need more time to draw, you can pause the video. If you're ready, let's take a look at some of the questions. For question 1, put a tick in the correct boxes. For statement A, the nearer the object is to the light source, the smaller the shadow of the object. What do you think? Is it true or false? I shall try it with the paper cone. So this is my paper cone. I'm, I'm going to bring it near to the light source. 
Oh, I do not see a smaller shadow. I see a bigger shadow. So the statement is false. For the next statement B, the nearer the object is to the screen, the clearer the outline of the shadow. What do you think? Is it true or false? I think it's true. Okay, let's try it out. I'm going to bring the object very near to the screen and I can see that the shadow outline is very sharp and clear. So the statement is true. Let's put a tick. For statement C, an object can cast shadows of different shapes depending on the position of the object or light source. We have just experienced that, right? Uh, let me try with the cup. So with the cup, if I move the object into a different position, I see a different shadow, a different shape of the shadow, right? And what if I move the, the light source? Okay, let me bring the light source above. Okay, so if you see the shadow that's formed on the paper, you have a round shape, Okay, whereas if I move it, move the light source, I can have a cup shape. If I move the light source here, I have a round shape. So it is true that an object can cast shadows of different shapes depending on the position of the object or light source. What about statement D? Two shadows can be cast at the same time using two sources of light shining from two directions. have the paper cone and two sources of light so let's see what the shadow looks like oh I have oh this is one and this is the other can you see two shadows are formed from the two sources of light okay so it is true that two shadows can be cast at the same time using two sources of light shining from two directions. That is true. Let's take a look at more questions. On page 21, they ask, which shadow can you not get from the mark below? One, two, three, and four. You may want to pause the video to think through what answer you would like to give. So I have a mark here, mark, and I am going to look at the shadows form on the screen. Okay, if if I move the cup in this position, oh my shadow looks like question number one, or oh, sorry, option number one. And if I but I, I don't seem to be able to get option number two because the handle, the handle will, will, and unless I move it this way, but if I move it this way, it's going to look like shadow number four. And to get shadow number three, I just need to hide the handle and I get shadow number three. So I think it is impossible to get shadow number two. So the answer is two. Let's take a look at question 3. Which of the following can form the shadow shown above? So this is a circle and the whole thing is blocked. So it forms a solid circle shadow. We have a straw, a ring, an ice cream cone and a pot with a plant. So which are the possible items that can form this type of shadow? You may want to pause the video and think through the answer. Okay, let's take a look at the straw. So I have a straw here and you can see that it forms a shadow of a ring. Right? And how about a ring? I have a ring here. Well, the ring will form a shadow with, of a ring because the middle part allows the light to pass through. What about 
the ice cream cone. The ice cream cone, you can be this position to form a triangle or I can move it like this to form a circle. And this is a solid circle, so C works. What about the plant pot with the plant? So imagine there's a plant, but I can always turn the pot such that it can form a solid circle. So it looks like the answer is C and D only. So the answer is number four. Let's turn, take a look at page 22. At which position would the shadow cast have the sharpest outline? Do you remember? Is it near the screen or far away from the screen? One, two, three or four. You may want to pause the video to think about the answer. Okay, if you're ready to join us, let's take a look. Which object will cast the sharpest outline? So I have the cone that is in position 1, that's near the, the flashlight but far from the screen. I'm going 2, 3 and 4. 4 is closest, closest, oh sorry, 4 is closest to the screen. 4, 3, 2, 1. And you can see that the nearer it is to the light source and further from the screen, the blurrer it is. So in order to have the sharpest outline, I need it to be near the screen. Okay, so that is number four. For question five, which of the following shadows cast is wrong? Okay, so if you have number, you have one, two, three, and four. You may want to pause the video and think about the answer. Okay, for number one. If it's a round ball or a disc-shaped object, yes, it should form a shadow like this. Similarly, for a cone, a cone, which I've shown earlier, you can also form a triangular shape. If this is a cone, and, oops, and it forms a triangular-shaped shadow. Okay. For a donut, a donut well, resembles my ring, so it allows light to pass through in the center, and so it forms this shadow. But for number two, I don't think it works. So I have an object that looks like the can. It looks like a can, like this object, right? But if I form, I look at the shadow, if I hold the object like this, which is what is shown in option two, I cannot get that round shadow. That's unless I tilt it this way, right? But otherwise, in this position, I cannot get a round shadow. So, the one that is wrong is option two, or number two. Okay, now let's take a look at question number six. The following objects are grouped according to, and it's a blank. So, is it, are they grouped according to their state of matter, their texture, the, the amount of light that passes through them, or their color? So, let's take a look at this group. Clear water and window pane. Second one, frosted glass, tracing paper. The third one, mercury and gold coin. Mercury is silver in color and it is a kind of metal that is in the liquid state. So it is a liquid metal. Okay. So you may want to pause the video and think about the answer. Okay, if you're ready, let's take a look for a clear water for clear water and window pane if it is grouped according to their state of matter one is liquid and one is solid window pane is solid then this one is these two are solids this is a liquid and solid so the three groups yeah you cannot be according to the state of matter the texture clear water well is wet window pane is smooth Frosted glass, it can be smooth or rough depending on how they make it. Tracing paper, this is, tra like, this is similar to tracing paper. So you see to tracing paper, it allows some light to pass through so you can see the words but not so clearly, right? Then it's liquid and, and gold coin. Texture doesn't seem right because it can have varying textures. How about the color? This is silver and this is gold. So this is not one color. What about 
the amount of light that passes through them. We have clear water and window pane. So I have here glass, which is what the window pane is made of, and I've got clear water. So let's see if the, the light from the flashlight can pass through. Okay, so wow, the light actually passes through the glass and the water. Okay, then what about tracing paper? This is tracing paper. Frosted glass will be a similar look. It's just that it's made of glass and it's not very. It's not clear. It is. Um, it is translucent. Okay, and let's take a look at this tracing paper. I'm shining the flashlight, the light through, and you, if I move the light, you can see the light is moving through the paper, and you can still see some light, but it's not as clear as when I pass it them pass the light through glass and and clear water, right? Okay, yeah. Can you see I'm moving the light? Okay, now for a gold coin and mercury, a gold coin, both of them are opaque, so light does not pass through. So these three objects are according to all the light goes through, some light passes through, and no light passes through. So they are grouped according to the amount of light that passes through them. That is number three. Okay, for number question seven, when does an eclipse of the sun occur? I remember I saw the eclipse of the sun one afternoon and it was bright and then something came along to block the light. And you know, this is the sun that you, you can see, but we, we are not supposed to see it. We just you know, look, it, look at it through maybe a reflection or um, like in water or I think we used our mobile phone and you can see that at that point this is set an object something in the sky is blocking the sun so you see a ring of fire like a ring of light so the object that's blocking is actually the moon and this is the sun and I'm looking at it so we have we have the sun here the sun and then the moon is blocking and here is the earth and then I'm standing here the earth and I can see the moon come in between the earth and the sun and that's when I, I see that the sun is blocked and the sky suddenly turned darker so this is a solar eclipse an eclipse of the sun and this happens when the moon comes between the earth and the sun so the answer is a. Oh, it's A. Okay. Thank you for joining me for this lesson.